The Cincinnati Zoo naturally is involved in conservation all over the world, but people often ask what can they do to really help. And in our area, probably the number one thing that you can do with your family that's fun and helpful is to plant for pollinators. It can help hummingbirds and other migratory songbirds. It can help bees. It can help butterflies. And especially this time of year, it's important because for things like monarch butterflies, it helps what my friend Dirk says is feed the migration. Dirk Morgan's here. He's, of course, from Morgan's Canoe Livery and Adventures. We're old friends. We paddle the river. He also manages our bees here at the zoo. But I always say he's the Johnny Appleseed of milkweed. So I know milkweed is tied directly to the success of monarchs, right? That's, that's correct, Thane. And milkweed is actually the only plant that the uh, monarch butterfly, the female, will lay the eggs on. We have two uh, varieties here. We have the swamp milkweed, we have the common milkweed, and you can see some of the differences of the pods on those. Um, matter of fact, the female will generally only lay one egg per plant because a caterpillar in its lifetime before it goes into a chrysalis will consume an entire plant. So and I've seen that in my yard. It's hilarious. I mean, it starts out a small caterpillar. By the time it's done, that plant's done. That's right. And uh, n not only uh, that, but, uh, you know, it, it lays a pheromone on it. So other females know not to, oh, okay. you know, that there's already an egg on that plant. So it's a constant battle to find enough milkweed because, unfortunately, its own name kind of maligns it with a lot of people yeah. in the fact that it's called a weed when it's actually one of Ohio's natural uh, native uh, you know, pollinator plants. And it's very valuable, not just to monarchs, but you'll see hundreds of honeybees on it and other milkweed bugs and, and pollinators, wasp and so forth. Now I've seen out near your place fields full of native milkweed. And how do all those seeds get out there. I mean, well, uh, this is the time of year when the pods begin to ripen on the milkweed and it's very important, particularly that we not cut uh, before say the second week of October. Uh, if you see milkweed and the pods are still green, oh. that means those seeds are still developing. They cannot fly away. Uh, once the pods are brown, you'll see oh. that they become fluffy. Look at light. that. And we have literally Woo. hundreds. All right, so those are the actual seeds. Those are the yeah. actual seeds. That's amazing. These are from yeah. last fall. Yeah. And uh, your horticultural team was probably not going to like me doing that, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's our yeah. our pollinator garden. We're good. You know, we're, we, we work with Monarch Watch. Uh, yeah. So far this year, we've released uh, over 200 Monarchs just from our campground alone. It's mm -hmm. a perfect venue with a lot of kids coming down to pass out milkweed seeds, to, to let them, uh, in many cases, we've named the monarchs, but the there more important go. thing for monarch watch is the number. Keep a record, sure. And from Cincinnati, they've got over a 2,000 mile migration. So what we need people to do, Thane, is to create not huge gardens, not, not even this big as this Cincinnati Zoo has so many great pollinator, native pollinator plants, but plant perennials, plant native to Ohio, they'll come up every year. Yep. And they're low maintenance and they're beautiful. If we can get everyone to plant one small garden, even if it's 10 by 10 yep. uh, in their backyard, like you said, one plant was totally consumed. Oh, yeah. They would love it if you had 10 plants there. So it's easy enough to do. And these make way stations. If you think of that monarch flying as much as 150 miles in a day if it catches yeah. the right winds, then they hopscotch and as they make their way through yeah. through uh, Texas, they start to cluster and form these mm -hmm. large groups of butterflies naturally and then they go to the mountains of Mexico, all the way to Mexico and they overwinter. This is the Methuselah generation of monarchs that flies. They yeah. have a bigger wingspan yeah. uh, and they won't actually breed until they over winter in Mexico yep. for two months and then come back up into Texas and New Mexico. It's, it's, it's one of nature's crazy. miracles, it really is. And this is really exciting. You know, this weekend is the great outdoor weekend throughout our region. As I joke with Dirk, of course, it's the great outdoor weekend every year and every weekend out at, at Morgan's on the river, one of my favorite things to do. But you can celebrate that in lots of ways. And one is to plant to help feed the migration. 
We're excited at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden because this coming week, starting on September 28th and running the whole week, is our celebration of monarchs. So look online, look on our Facebook page. You'll see lots of ways you can participate and help with native plants and help native pollinators. <laughs> and if we work together, we're gonna make the world a greener place. Dirk, thanks and thanks everybody.